Ow! And welcome to Wrong Way. And this is the Yano Bike T10. Let me tell you more about it. Wrong Way. And right off the bat, also huge thanks to Yano Bike itself, the company that produces these scooters, for sending me one over for testing purposes. Now, this will not be yet my final review of this scooter. I have driven it for around maybe 100 kilometers or so, but I've yet to test the performance abilities of the scooter because, you know, recently I had a crash on my... electric unicycle and I don't want to yet test the range when driving faster or you know climbing uphill so you will need to wait for the full review for the you know total results wrong way you know proven etc but for now I'm really glad to share with you my impressions of the scooter how it drives how it's built and so on so yeah let's get started I also need to tell you about the pricing of the scooter because it's actually really, really cheap as it is imported from directly from China. It costs around $800, which is, yeah, it's really cheap actually for a scooter that has a 23 amp hour battery at 52 volts and two motors with 1000 watts nominal power each. I mean, you can see the acceleration test with around, I know, 60, 70, 70% uh, battery or so. Let's do it. Hydraulic brakes or semi hydraulics, I don't really know. They are really good. I could even get maybe a bit more speed, but sorry, guys, once again, I just want to heal up a bit more before I go back to my usual testing. <laughs> Uh, this scooter can go up to like 55 even 60 kilometers an hour which is a really really decent result for such a scooter the scooter also has 10 inch tube tires front and rear they're also really wide quite comfortable in my opinion it features uh, also suspension front and rear um, it is pretty comfortable it has a bit of trouble but um, yeah it has pretty much no dampening but again at this price point it's pretty nice I will also include some tips in my future video how to make the front shocks also work better or you can even adjust uh, the shocks to uh, your weight so if you're lighter you can exchange the springs for different springs so it will be comfortable more comfortable if if you are a lighter rider for example you Carter anyhow the Yano bike T10 also features hydraulic brakes or semi hydraulic brakes it's really really a awesome feature for a scooter at this price point or basically in any scooter it's a super nice feature because you don't need to apply much force to brake with these brakes and they they work really well i mean this scooter brakes on a dime it brakes better than a lot of scooters that are more expensive than the t10 for example the tech life x7 has just mechanical discs uh, i mean brakes the same applies to the mercane mx60 which was recently on my channel yeah brakes are really really good on a scooter i believe these are also 140 uh, millimeter discs so yeah really really good in the brakes department really safe as well now i can walk you around the scooter a bit more um, the handlebar folds naturally the um, scooter also folds and in its folded or unfolded position it's still really compact at 118 18 centimeters in, in total length so it's much more portable than for example the Tech Life X7 
Um, here you can see the thumb throttle and the usual, um, you know, Chinese display. I configured it. I configured it to have several options, which are, you know, suited for my driving. For example, there is no uh, stand still start. I need to kick or like. I need to push the scooter to activate the throttle. I think that's really important in a really important feature in power scooters. I activated full power. I deactivated the um, regenerative braking because it was it, because it is just really strong. The uh, regenerative braking it really did not suit my driving style, so I turned it off altogether. I, I I don't like to do that because I like to. I have my regenerative braking, but you know, that's what it is. Anyhow, I also turned on the cru cruise control and yeah, basically that's it. Here you can see a bit of buttons, button action on the handlebar, single motor, dual motor, dual motor is if you push it in. There's also eco and turbo mode. The eco mode basically limits the top speed to, um, I don't know, I just always turn it off. Uh, here you can see the um, headlight switch. So. There are actually some decent front lights on the scooter. You can definitely use, they're definitely very usable when riding in the night. And there is also a big tail light with a additional brake light. This thing is well lit up. I really like these features. There's also a huge, a, a really loud, it's super loud, uh, horn, which is in the front uh, light. So in the features department, it's really nice. Maybe one thing I would like to see added here is either a key or some sort of remote to lock the scooter up when it's, uh, you know, when it's locked somewhere on a bike, bike stand or yeah, something like that. There's also a single charger, which is, I believe here, yeah, on the scooter GX16-3 port. This is pretty flimsy. Uh, the scooter charges with a quite peculiar charger because it is a two and a half amp charger. The lightest probably I have ever seen on a scooter with a fan and it's a 67 volt charger. But this is a, you know, 58 volt scooter. So it's a intelligent charger and takes around eight, nine hours to charge it from zero to 100%. All right, so yeah, maybe we can fold the scooter up. So yeah, to fold it up, also really easy. Just need to release this clamp. And then there's a button on the other side, which is, yeah, yeah, boom. Now it folds and locks in place. So you can, you know, either probably it around like this, or you can just pick it up. And naturally it folds even further. So you need to release this thing. And there's also, there's also like a button here so the steering column locks in place in one or the other boom uh, position which i also really like it's a feature that i see oftentimes on flj scooters or lang fade or whatever and then you can also fold up the handlebars and ouch yeah this is a really really portable portable scoot quite nice but you can't say that it's light because it weighs 30, I believe 32 kilograms, but still, yeah, pretty nice small package. By the way, um, there will be also a um, live stream event with Yano Bike sometime soon. Check out the link in the description uh, because there will be really insanely good prices on the T10, T85 and other scooters. So be sure to check out that live stream. In terms of build quality and you know how the scooter is designed i also have pretty much no complaints maybe one thing is that these grips are pretty sticky i don't really know why and um yeah there are a lot of screws here i'm not sure if the water can ingress here i have to still check on that i was riding in the rain as you can see it's all you know covered in mud and works fine but yeah i need to check how was the scooter on the inside? Maybe ask other owners of the scooter how it behaves after rain. I also, um, yeah, there was also a seat option available and I have the seat um, for the Yano Bike T10. I just dismounted it because, yeah, I, I just like riding the scooter more without the seat, but I will definitely show you how it looks like with the seat uh, in the, the full review. 
uh, yeah and these like four screws here and this screw I mean these screws are basically you know you just go through the deck so you can just remove them and put some glue inside or just leave them open like this and this screw you would put, need to put some glue inside to just remove it but I find it still to be quite useful because it provides you a bit more grip I think the rear mudguard is also really nice I think they improved it from the versions before because I get, don't get any mud sprayed on my butt and the front mudguard is also pretty nice so yeah all in all I I really enjoy it yeah for 800 US dollars I think it's a I think it's a, actually a pretty good deal so yeah let's ride a bit more okay so let's have a ride yeah as you can hear this scooter is yeah you can definitely hear uh, when it's accelerating, especially at low RPM, it's not like a super fine scooter like the Zero Ten X, for example. But, dude, I just love these brakes so much. I think hydraulic or semi-hydraulic brakes are a must for electric scooters. I mean, performance scooters because they just perform so much better. Yeah. In terms of suspension, you can see that I am bouncing around just a bit. Um, yeah, I mean, it's very similar to the Shift 7 scooter we had recently. Um, I like the suspension, it's good with bigger bumps, but in terms of riding, you know, on uh, some sort of asphalt that hasn't got the perfect, you know, surface, or in terms of riding on a pavement, like a brick road, uh, it, it will not be like the most comfortable. A Tech Life X7 is definitely more comfortable in this regard but yeah it also packs a punch you can see here it's 50 on the speedo 56 60 um but definitely not so fast via gps <laughs> 56 yeah i also don't have a full battery so that's also why not why it's not going as fast and woo! yeah <laughs> love the sound of the rear tire um, anyhow, I really also like the, you know, the features here, the light right here, the horn, single dual motor, everything is within, you know, fingers reach. And yeah, uh, we, I did not do a performance range test, but with my girlfriend, we went on a trip, um, actually really far out, around 60 kilometers on the Tech Life X7 and the Yanobike T10. Both have 52 volt, 23 amp hour packs. And after 60 kilometers, like for real, 60 kilometers, I still had maybe 20% you know, battery left or 15. So if you drive it like very carefully, like I'm, I'm saying like 20, 25 kilometers an hour, I think you can get to 70 kilometers. Um, the, the throttle is sort of responsive takes a while until it you know reacts the same thing was with the regenerative braking but in all settings there are like two settings for the regenerative, regenerative braking the brake is just super hard and it activates like a second or two after you you know press on the lever on the lever so yeah that's not so optimal and one thing I noticed that is like the defect about the scooter is that there is no um sensor or it's broken and the rear brake so usually when you press the accelerator and the, the brake at the same time for example here nothing will happen like even if i i start and i press the brake yeah it just deactivates the throttle but with the left brake i mean the rear brake it's not the same story it still activates so this is some kind of broken broken thing and definitely needs um, repair because it's not really safe to have a brake activate the same at the same time as the throttle so yeah as you can see definitely a sporty ride I think in terms of hill, hill climbing I mean I didn't yet test it but I think it's worth that the 
GR10X or the Kappa X7 just don't, doesn't have that much torque. But in terms of top speed, it might be the same or even a bit better. I'm not sure really. To give the, the whole test afterwards. Sometimes even a horn doesn't help, right? Oh yeah, and configured it to the maximum like performance start I can have. Yeah, as said, on, on pavement, could be better. Could be definitely better. Here we also have a moment to check out the lights in action and as you can see it has a pretty focus beam which is really nice and yeah riding in the night definitely not the best you know light i've ever seen on a scoot but definitely really usable definitely a lot better than quite a bit of scooters on the market lots of water lots of rain recently Boy, that's, that's a lot of water. I've never seen so much water there. If you're still here, leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.